Okay, everyone, what's up? Goldie here, and I'm going to be going over the 8 game main slate here today on uh, Wednesday, getaway day, 26 April. Um, I'm going to try and keep this, uh, keep this a little bit shorter. I say that every day, but, um, you know, we'll see how, see how we do. Um, so this is going to be a little bit uh, later this morning. Um, got some things going on. So um, we're going to try and keep it a, a little bit uh, condensed. Um, so I think today, uh, once again, an interesting tournament slate. We've got a few more very playable arms that we can get to on the mound. Um, maybe more so than in the last couple of days. Uh, we're getting Kodai Senga back. He gets Washington now. Uh, walks are a huge problem with him. We'll get into the number. Sandy Alcantara gets a, a pretty decent strikeout matchup, at least, uh, in Atlanta. He's had some, I would say, mixed results against them in the past. Um, he sees them quite a few times a season, so a lot of experience there, but we're not really worried about uh, Sandy being right, of course, won the Cy Young last year. Bryce Elder, price elevated now, 9400 for him. He was in the uh, mid-6Ks all season, but he's been excellent. So he's projecting very well naturally against Miami. Uh, we saw Charlie Morton tear them apart yesterday, um, despite the <laughs> what should be a, a pretty low strikeout rate for Miami. They're, and they've, they've been awful and missing one of their key cogs in the lineup, Luis Arise, for the last little while due to some nagging um, nagging sort of injuries with them. Uh, it's made this lineup pretty attackable, so we may be able to go after them once again today. Taiwan Walker on the mound against Seattle, 9200 It's kind of an elevated price tag for him, and market kind of agrees projection-wise, and it's certainly not a not the greatest spot. Seattle's been attackable with righties, however, uh, this season, but Taiwan Walker's um, raw whiff stuff isn't all that attractive. Uh, would certainly rather get to maybe a guy that has a, a bit more whiff stuff, Logan Gilbert right beneath him. Um, he was originally slated to start yesterday, got pushed back to today because of uh, some slight back spasms. Doesn't look like it's anything serious, so he should be good to go. Bad matchup, of course, over here in Philly for him as well. We'll get into the numbers. Uh, Hunter Brown got Atlanta in his last start. Got picked apart a little bit. Um, so welcome to the big leagues, kid. 9000 The price has come down. He was 9800 in his last start. Uh, I still like this for him, even though he gets another very difficult matchup in Tampa Bay. I think this is an interesting tournament spot you could consider getting to. Anthony DiSclafani, um Tough raw strikeout matchup against the Cardinals. They're going to have some lefties they might, that might make things difficult for him. Uh, down here at the bottom, you know, we'll get into the other guys kind of in the mid-range as well. Down here at the bottom, a couple of real chalk pieces coming in so far. Steven Matz on the other side of that St. Louis-San Francisco game. He's coming in very, very popular so far, 31% ownership. He's been not excellent. Um, and this is very high ownership, so we'll talk about that a little bit. Patty Sandoval as well. He gets the A's on the other side. His strikeout stuff down quite significantly. So perhaps some elevated ownership on him as well. Uh, certainly the projection is popping really hard, but his first four starts have not been great for DFS purposes, to say the least. Um, so perhaps a, a couple of attackable arms for sure and, and some decent tournament spots. Also some some pretty okay cash spots. So uh, that said, let's let's just get into it. I'm trying to keep it short here. Um, all right. Uh, Dodgers and Pittsburgh. They are The Dodgers are getting Tony Gonsolin back today, which is great. He's only going to throw four innings, though, however, which is not great. Um, their starting pitching staff over here for the Dodgers, they're struggling quite a bit. They're giving up a lot of runs, and their offense really hasn't been all that great either, to be quite honest. Pretty attackable, at least in the swing and miss. 24% K rate for them so far. 126 WRC plus and hitting for a ton of power still. 37% aggregate hard hit rate, hard contact rate, I should say. And a 358 Woba with a 12.5% walk rate. I mean, this is still the Dodgers offense over here. And it doesn't matter that they really, that they lost Trey Turner uh, and they're down Will Smith, anything like this. They're just shuffling guys right in. They've got Outman performing exceptionally. Mookie is Mookie. Freddie is Freddie. Uh, Max Muncy's been great to start the season. He, however, went on the paternity list, and they did just call up another young, high 
hit tool prospect of theirs, similar to a Max Muncy, maybe questionable in, in the defensive upside. Uh, but that's Michael Bush. Uh, he's the stone men. Play him at first or second base today. And probably an attackable spot for the Dodgers, I think, against Rowenzi Contreras. 5,700 on the mound for Contreras. Um, he's He's got high upside in the future. He really is struggling with throwing strikes two and three deeper in the count. It's because of a lack of a, a real good changeup and a, and a good curveball. The slider is, is really a, a very good pitch for him. And he neutralizes a lot of the power that he would give up otherwise, uh, certainly to same-handed hitters, but it's a good pitch against lefties too. And despite having a, a pretty high barrel rate at a full 10% with hard contact to the right side, this number two righties in terms of ISO at a 170 would be far higher if it were not for this pretty damn good slider. So four-seamer is unfortunately pretty bad, and that's where he's giving up most of the hard contact, certainly to the right side. And we don't want to be messing with with the Dodgers. This offense is still very, very good. So um, at 5,700, it's an intriguing price tag, but the strikeout stuff leaves quite a bit on the table and with an elevated walk rate to really both sides of the plate here at a, at a full 10 percent uh, Dodgers of course still walking a lot they're going to be very patient they're losing Max Muncy at least for today but all these other guys in the, in the lineup they're still very patient hitters uh, Mookie Freddie obviously not going to beat themselves JD will walk um, Altman so, shown a little bit of patience at the plate he's He's striking out a little bit, but also the power is definitely there. Of course, David Peralta, Miguel um, Miguel Vargas, good cheap pieces to add to some Dodger stacks if you want to get there as well. And I mentioned Michael Bush is the stone men with multi-position eligibility. So uh, I think we can get to some Dodger stacks here. Uh, off the top of my head, haven't quite looked at their ownership, but that will it is pushed to the site already, so you guys can um, peruse at your leisure. So I'm not going to be doing this, even though this price tag for Rowenzi is, is attractive. This is a really bad matchup for him, I think. And getting to the Dodgers here um, looks like a, a pretty viable stack. Uh, it is in Pittsburgh, and it is just 60 degrees. Uh, but Pittsburgh will play up left-handed power a little bit more than right-handed power. So uh, this is a decent spot here for really both sides of the plate in terms of raw contact and hard contact on the barrel for the Dodgers. Uh, I think this is fine. At 5,700, it is a fine price tag, but there's probably, and since we're kind of starving for some value down cheap, you may want to consider this because the Dodgers, like I said, have been striking out a little bit. So there is, there are a couple of routes here for Rowenzi to to pop through, you know, a standard deviation or two higher than this median projection, um, which could put him upwards of, you know, 18, 20 points even. And at 5,700, that's fine. Um, not much, Certainly not my favorite play, however. Uh, the barrel rate and the walk rate against this particular team are uh, a little bit too high for my liking. And we, as I mentioned, Gonsolin's only going to go four innings here. So at this price tag, don't think we can really target him. Um, now, nobody's going to play him because of that. And the median projection so far should be taking into account the limited pitch count. But um, I'm not too convinced that's really the case just yet perhaps it is i mean we were paying ten thousand for this guy last year he had a fantastic season in 2022 and all of the stuff is is great um really turned a corner last year but unfortunately he's only going to go four innings so if you want to take some deep tournament shot punts on this uh, i don't think we can get there in 20 max or anything like that it's got to be deep stuff and you're really looking for an outlier performance like a 6Ks in, in four innings type of, type of deal, which is reasonable, and that could pop him to 20 points or so. Um, and that could be all you need. But uh, it's certainly not my favorite high probability play, but it's it's okay if you're uh, really targeting um, and kind of an outlier performance. Don't really want to go, be going after the Pirates. The uh, I, I believe they're still missing uh, Brian Reynolds today, still on paternity leave. Um but he may be activated t t uh, just today. So I'm, I'm not totally sure about that. Keep an eye on that. And that would um, almost fully take me off of Gonsolin if, if Brian Reynolds were back. Um, 
but I think this is an okay tournament shot if you want to take it and and just count. I mean, that's the that's the max. He's only going to go four innings, and he will get pulled even if he is rolling. So uh, just be aware of that. Uh, we're dealing with Dave Roberts over here. But like mostly the Dodgers, maybe a couple Gonsolin pieces in deep tournament stuff. And mostly off of the Pirates, I don't really want to go after Gonsolin. There's some cheap pieces for you, of course. Jack Sawinski has some pop, but um, not thrilled overall going after uh, going after a really good arm. Uh, okay, let's move on to Houston and Tampa. 9K for Hunter Brown, as I mentioned. Medium projection, um, kind of disappointing so far, but also kind of expected. Okay, he gets Tampa, and they're uh, you know one of the best teams, probably the best team in baseball so far. Uh, 20 and four now. They did lose again yesterday somehow. Um, Decent spot again, I think, for for Hunter Brown to capitalize on on real high upside at at pretty low ownership. Now, admittedly, this this matchup is once again pretty bad, and Tampa's been fantastic against righties this season. 21% K rate, high walk rate, 150 WRC plus, 375 WOBA. They're getting on base, hitting for a lot of average and a lot of power in the air. So this is a stack that we want to target in general, and I think you could also take a couple of shots against Hunter Brown here. Uh, certainly not my favorite. I don't like attacking real good arms and, and high upside arms um, with good pitch mixes, good arsenals. He's got a good four-seamer and a good slider. The changeup still a work in progress, of course, and throwing the curveball a lot, but this is also so far in the few starts this season has, has provided him um, with break-even value and really – for a very young arm like this, um, in a admittedly a, a pretty short sample still, this is uh, encouraging. So uh, generally, I don't want to go after guys like this, but um, we saw that you know young arms have have some variance in them. No, really, no matter who they're facing. And again, this is a, it's a very good lineup with a a lot of really good results so far. Um, now, 25 games, just 25 games, and we don't want to get too crazy with the Rays here, but this is going to be a good team all season. Uh, they're probably not going to be creating at a full 150 WRC plus all season, hitting for 237 ISO as a, a team aggregate, but, um, you know, so potentially some regression in those numbers coming, but it's going to take a little bit for them to come down. They've been that good so far. Um, so I, I do like this as a, a tournament play at, at pretty low ownership. He's got upside for 20 and, and 25 here. Even in this difficult matchup, he can go six. Um, I think this is is fine to really play both sides. On the other side, you have Calvin Fauché. He's just going to open. They're, like, they're claiming that he's not an opener, but he's an opener. He's also only going to go four innings, similar to Gonsolin. And this is much more attractive, 5,300, but he gets Houston over here. This lineup, while missing Jordan Alvarez, dealing with a bit of a neck issue, um, they're, they're still very potent. They've got Mo DeBone at the top of the lineup. He doesn't strike out at all. He's a pest. Jeremy Pena cutting down on the strikeouts a little bit more, starting to see the baseball a little better. They've got him back up in the two. Kyle Tucker, they've since moved up to the three-hole with the absence of Jordan Alvarez. So uh, Alex Bregman has always been you know hitting up here at the top of the lineup, doesn't strike out. Pretty decent contact hitter over here as well. So not super wild about going after Fauché. And um, I would almost rather get to some Houston pieces. You could still get to a cheap Jose Abreu. He's only 3,500 still. Uh, Alex Bregman is 45. That's very playable. Kyle Tucker expensive, of course, at 57. You can you could certainly play him in stacks if you want to. Pena at 42. Moreau Dubon at the top at 34. So... Of course, they have the the power bats down at the young power bats down at the bottom of the lineup. Corey Jolks, David Hensley, very cheap price tags there, 28 and 2300 respectively. So you can get to some of the Houston Astros here if you'd like to um, like to play some what's likely to be relatively low ownership. This game is in Tampa, and the offenses just generally don't get played in Tampa. They mostly shouldn't, but. Um, since it's a pretty heavy pitcher's ballpark, but this is a, still a pretty damn good offense down here. And I think you can get to some tournament, tournament pieces of the Astros, probably not in heavy exposures, but uh, playable for sure. Um, favorite plays probably from the, the Rays. Price adjusted, man, man, it's starting to get pretty tough over here. Um, 
you know, Wander is back down to 5,300. That's nice. And it's a more playable price tag than the 63 that you're paying for him like last week. Um, up at the top of the of the top guys, he's probably the best price adjusted play. But these numbers so far for Hunter Brown are really excellent. I don't like going after him and certainly a very expensive price tag. So kind of off of the raise, uh, even though they're just going to win every damn game this season. Okay, Seattle and Philly, um, as I mentioned, Logan Gilbert getting his start today after he was pushed back from yesterday. 9,100 for Gilbert. Um, really the only problem that we run into, it's not the K stuff, right? He has fine swinging strike stuff, pushing 11%. It's the called strikes that we are a little concerned with, keeping his CSW down at uh, sub-26% here. Um, K, stuff, K stuff is still fine. It's the it's really the hard contact uh, that we're worried about with Gilbert. He gives up a little bit of power to the right side. And Philly, of course, their their best hitters uh, are, at least at this point, hitting from the left side in uh, Kyle Schwarber, Bryson Sott they have leading off. I wouldn't call him you know, one of their best hitters necessarily just yet, but leading off and, and platooning um, from the left side. Brandon Marsh, he's been great to start the season. So they're... They're actually pretty balanced because they do have Trey and JTR there. Uh, Castellanos, he's had a really good start to the year as well. So very balanced lineup over here. Uh, I would say their best hitters probably coming from, at least in terms of raw power, um, probably from the left side, I would say, with, with Schwarber and, and Brandon Marsh. Um, but, like, don't get me wrong, Trey Turner and and Castellanos and JT Real Muto, I mean, they've got pop also. Uh, so kind of a dangerous spot here for Gilbert. Elevated price tag, 9,100. Not super crazy about that. Um, projecting just fine. I think this is maybe a tick high in the early going here uh, for, a, for a median projection. But the ownership, I think, is, is okay. Um, we're probably going to be spreading guys out here at the top of the pricing spectrum on DK once again, similar to what we did yesterday or what we could have done yesterday. But that's really the issue that we run into with Gilbert. It's a, um, it's a pretty straight fastball and the lack of a, a wipeout slider that's leading to a little bit of the power here. Curveball's just okay. Change is just okay. Fastball is fine. He's, he's got gas. He throws hard and, and he spots it pretty well. It's not that he's going to walk people or get on the barrel necessarily. Um, too terribly often, but the, the contact that he's giving up uh, is certainly of the medium plus variety and notable, definitely. So uh, doesn't really translate into homers or anything, but this is a small ballpark over here in Citizens Bank, and it looks to be you know pushing 60 degrees or so. Should be a nice day for baseball over here in Philly. Um, I think I would probably side with Gilbert in this particular matchup. But I would not be shocked to see Philly piece him apart a little bit here uh, if he's up in the strike zone. So if, certainly if he's throwing any of this sinker at all. Pretty bad pitch there. But if he's he's entering into the variance range with some of this four-seamer um, four -seamer value and with the lack of a slider and really not throwing the changeup all that much, the curveball is kind of marginal as well. So the arsenal isn't all too impressive, even though the arm is really strong, and he does have K stuff. Uh, you can go after Philly in the early going here, 25% K rate against righties in 600 PAs, 120 WRC+, plus, however, 180 ISO with a 350 WOBA. Hard contact, definitely. So uh, I think it, it does make the Phillies a little bit viable here if you want to go after a guy, certainly if uh, Logan Gilbert's ownership steams at all. Taiwan Walker on the other side, we mentioned him. He's a fine tournament play, in general, because he suppresses pretty well. He's got some good suppression numbers, three three and a half ERA with a 4.0 xFIP. It's fine. Buck 20 whip because he doesn't really walk people. He throws strikes, does pitch to a lot of contact. And unfortunately, when we really want to go after Seattle, it's with guys that are going to be able to throw it by them. Striking out at a 24% clip so far, not hitting for as much power. So when we have guys that have that have real good whiff stuff, they're not performing up to their kind of hype so far um, this season. And unfortunately, Taiwan Walker leaving a little bit on the table in that regard. 20% K rate, swinging strike rate, sub 10%. Called strike rate is okay and, and keeping the CSW pushing 27, but rather low for somebody up at this price tag 
Um, similar to Gilbert up here, this this CSW number, we need to see this push in 30 for top end of the rotation starters. So um, a very potent offense, of course, in Seattle. They will hit for some power, and when they start waking up, they're going to, they're going to wake up in a hurry. Um, not wild about this price tag for sure and not pro projecting all that well. So he's probably going to get left off of a lot of tournament builds for me. But I wouldn't be surprised if I come in, you know, right around with the field with a few teams here or there. Um, nothing overly impressive in the arsenal outside of the splitter. That's really his best pitch. And it's what's keeping him from giving up uh, too much power when he's pitching to so much contact to the left side. So, um, strikeout stuff, certainly not overwhelming though. And that's really how we want to attack Seattle in a lot of scenarios. So I think you can get, get to some sneaky offense here really against some two real good arms. I mean, I respect Taiwan Walker's arsenal and his arm and, and the suppression, like this is a, a decent major league pitcher anymore, even though the, uh, you know, the 17 pitches that he's got are really none too impressive outside of the split change. So, um, that does make him a viable tournament play, however, with a really good split. If he's on the plus side of the variance here with the fastball mix, sinker's still pretty okay for him. If he's spotting this fastball and and getting some tail on it, a little bit of movement, then he can he can manage and, and pick through this lineup up here. As I said, they have been striking out a good bit and overall performing um Pretty mediocre and right about league average, just a 101 WRC plus so far uh, here in a pretty good sample, 650 PAs. So I think uh, if I had to choose, it'd be like uh, a Gilbert, uh, Phillies, Mariners, then a Taiwan Walker, but it's pretty close all the way around. I think you can mix in tournament stacks of pretty much all pieces in this game. Not wild about the 9200 for Taiwan Walker, though. Okay, Nats and the Mets. Boy, the Mets were disappointing last night, eh? Um, Jojo Gray was fantastic. It, he was, he, he went, what, like six, struck out seven, or five, struck out or nine or something? He had excellent stuff. Really encouraging from Jojo. And Mackenzie Gore here in the early going this year has, has also been um, a pretty attractive target. He's living up to a bit of the uh, prospect hype. He came over in the, in the Soto trade. Uh, but his four starts this season have been pretty damn good. Five and a third, six, three and two thirds, not the greatest. Um, did have the K stuff, though, and then six innings as well in his last outing. And he's had a couple of difficult spots. Atlanta at Coors Field, at the Angels, not so difficult, but that's the start in which he lasted just three and two thirds. Got him for six Ks, though. Um, and then Baltimore in his last start, whom he got for seven Ks. So the strikeout stuff is has been there and some of the upside stuff for him this season has been pretty attractive. Now we generally, I, I hate going after the Mets, even though Jojo picked them apart last night. Um, they may like this offense can go get cold uh, on occasion here. And as we see 350 PA is just starting to converge a little bit uh, against lefties this season, just a 107 WRC plus. It's not all too impressive. Striking out at a 20% clip, walking at a very high rate, of course. 165 ISO, so you know some power numbers here, but the hard contact is really kind of worrisome, and they're hitting a lot of ground balls. So not overly impressive. This is kind of the same Mets of last year where they're a damn good lineup, and they're probably going to make a pretty good run this season in winning baseball games. But in terms of DFS, they're a little frustrating to stack sometimes. Uh Certainly, if you had a good bit of them last night, pretty frustrating when JoJo picked them apart. So that said, I think at 7,500, given the stuff that Gore has displayed this year and very low ownership, I think the combination of these two numbers here, or these three, I suppose, um, you know, low medium projection, it's going to keep his ownership down. I think this is okay, and the stuff looks good so far this season. Now he's got to be careful with the changeup. Uh, two right-handers because with such negative value, he's not throwing it a lot so far. So um, with such negative value on it, he's eventually going to see that realized in some power numbers to the right side. But he's got good swing and miss so far and a, a good fastball. So um, this stuff is okay. Stuff is encouraging. But what I'm really worried about here is a very high walk rate. We need to see the walks come down because despite the K stuff, four walks, two walks, four, and four walks, 
in his four starts this season. So that's worrisome, and you you got to throw strikes, and you can't put people on base. Certainly against a lineup that is less likely to strike out and swing and miss and kind of struggles to really create. If you help them in any of those areas, it's going to make it very easy for the Mets to get there. So I think you can go back to the Mets. I also think in some tournament stuff you could take some shots on Mackenzie Gore um, since this lineup can go cold. And we saw what Jojo did to them last night. I think it's a, a fine price tag for Gore here. And I, I do like the ownership, admittedly. Uh, Kodai Senga on the other side, he also has a problem walking people. 15% here in the early going. Um, I mean, it, it, the difference here is he's 3100 more expensive. If I'm going to pay for a 12, 13, 14% walk rate, um, it, I mean, I'm certainly not going to pay 10000 for it. Uh, I'd much rather pay 7500 if I have to do it at all. Um, so he's been very frustrating. He gets the better raw batted ball matchup, but Senga's had problems here, man. And he, he took apart Miami in his first couple of starts, but walked three in each of those. And then against Oakland, he was really bad. He had the K stuff at, at seven Ks and four and two thirds, but he gave up four earned runs and walked four guys. And his last outing against San Francisco also walked another four batters. So he's having trouble throwing strikes here. And that really takes me off. Of, I do not like this price tag. Uh, really at all. Now, I'd, I like attacking Washington kind of in general, but, I mean, do we really want to attack a 19% K rate here with a 15% walk rate? I mean, I don't know about that. At a, at 10,600 over here on DK, um, this looks quite elevated to me. The, the median projection also looks rather high. This is a weak lineup, and they don't have a whole lot of power. 093 ISO here in the, in the early going, 280 Woba. So we could attack them, yeah hitting so many ground balls, and that, that's going to play well into Kodai Senga's splitter here uh, and the cutter as well. But he can't throw this split for a strike, man. He, he's struggling with spotting the four-seamer as well. Very worrisome that he's walking so many people and not able to go deep into games. I think those first two starts against the Marlins were just, just like, hey, we've never seen you, and we don't know what you're throwing. But now teams have a four-start sample on him, and they're aware that he's having trouble throwing it over the plate. So they're going to be a lot more patient, and and they're going to whiff a hell of a lot less than maybe the Marlins did in the first two starts against this split. So a little worrisome here. Um, it's not necessarily the contact numbers. In the early going, definitely a 40% hard contact rate to the right side is, is super worrisome. Um, the homer per nine numbers not converging yet really at all. It's throwing strike strikes two and three that are the problem for him. It's deeper in the count that's elevating the pitch count for him. So um, that's worrisome. 10-6, I do not like this price tag at all. It's going to keep his ownership down, so he's a fine tournament play because, yeah, if he's got it going and he's, and he's throwing strikes, he could pick apart Washington here pretty good. But um, not my favorite to pay this price tag for this kind of walk rate. I do not like doing it, even at very low ownership. Um, you're probably going to get some if you're just building teams, but... Uh, I'm not all that thrilled about it. He needs to show that he can throw strikes before I get super wild about paying 10-6 for the guy. Okay, Miami and Atlanta. Uh, Alcantara on the mound like this. Uh, this is a pretty decent spot for him. Bryce Elder on the other side. Pretty okay spot for him as well. Uh, like the price tag much more on Sandy than I do for Elder at 94. Um, 99 for Sandy is pretty, pretty damn good, you ask me. He's got a long history, as we alluded to, against... Atlanta sees him a couple of times a season, and uh, they've gotten to him a couple of times here and there, and when they can get a good look at him, uh, they have, let's see, uh, have not seen him yet this year. Uh, their last time seeing him was late last season, early September. They got to him a little bit. Um, but in the, what, three, two other outings last season, he put up 45 DK points and 38 and a half DK points. Um, <laughs> in one of those games, through a complete game shutout, got up for seven strikeouts. And in the other, in the 45 point game, he went eight innings, struck out 14. Okay, so <laughs> uh, we're not super worried about Sandy. Now we do have to be aware that he is coming off, uh, coming off the DL, and he did have some little kind of short case of biceps tendonitis. Um, that is very worrisome for a pitcher. Uh, and when I first saw that, I, you know, my heart kind of 
sank and it it, it, was, it was pretty worrisome. But looks like he's okay and and they're comfortable with uh, with letting him go uh, once again. So at an elevated price tag, that's really the only thing you got to worry about with Sandy um, and the extended history that the Braves have against him. That's pretty much it. Outside of that, like every single number is going to say play Sandy and you know, the median projection as of right now seems quite low to me, to be totally honest. The left-handers do get to him a little bit in terms of raw contact. Uh, 21% K rate there. It's a little below league average, as a matter of fact. He does induce a lot of soft contact, which neutralizes so much of the power that he would give up with this contact rate to the left side. But he's fantastic against the righties. He's a horse. He throws like 110 pitches every damn start. Um, so if he's got this, if he's got the slider spinning, um, and he's spotting this fastball here tonight, like he's got gas in the tank for sure. And a full 90 miles an hour on the slider, like the, the arsenal is excellent top to bottom. Um, so I'm not worried about, about attacking the Braves here at all. I, I like Sandy a good bit and this early 16% ownership on him, uh, I think is pretty attractive on the other side. 9400 for Bryce Elder. Price tag's elevated now, and we're at, what, 60... He was at 6400 or something in his first start this year. Um, 6900 down to 66 up to 77 and 83 in his last two starts. The K-stuff's been great, going six, six and a third, five and a third, and six innings in each of his four starts in a couple of difficult matchups. St. Louis he had. He also had Houston, and he's been pretty damn good. Very impressive. The ownership is also starting to elevate on him as well. Naturally, it's because he gets the Marlins, and they're terrible. 25% K rate so far in 700 PK, PAs rather, against righties this season. 146 ground ball to fly ball. It's a horrible number. 138 ISO, 83 WRC+. Plus. Just walking at a, you know, a tick or two below average are the Marlins here against righties. And if they still don't have Luis Arise, uh, I like playing some Bryce Elder here. I, I'm not sure the... Um, the ownership is really high enough given how bad Miami has been and how attackable. Uh, I do not like the price tag here at 94. I'd much rather pay the extra 500 and get to Sandy. I'm very confident in him um, in the stuff. So, of course, he's got, we've got matchup differences and, and all this kind of thing. And this is why Elder's projecting higher in the early going than Sandy is. Um, but at, at the same ownership, I think both of these guys are fine to mix into your pools today. Um, much more comfortable, of course, with a, a 99 on Sandy than I am a, a 94 on Elder. But uh, matchup and and raw stuff, I mean, I, maybe maybe brings those two prices a little bit in line for me. Um, it's okay to get to some Elder here. I, I don't like that the ownership is coming up. Uh, in aggregate, we, I mean, certainly in the in the last start, he was what three percent owned against Houston. So. That's a little concerning, and it's something we got to be aware of with constructions. But um, you know, if we don't want to get up to a Kodai Sanga, uh, I think an elder here at a little bit cheaper price tag is a, a very viable piece uh, to consider. So off of off of the Marlins almost entirely. You can play Jazzy again, of course. Um, now he's not nearly as as susceptible as Elder to the left side of the plate so far, not giving up near as much average or power as does say a Charlie Morton. But 17% K rate in 150 hitters is 17%. So Jazzy is going to make some contact here, and he hits right-hand pitching very, very well. Uh, we don't want to go after any of the righties over here, so it's really only Jazzy or Luis Arise again if Arise is in the lineup. Um, and let's see, I'm tr looking for his price over here. I have lost the Marlins. There they are. Uh, he's still 4,300, so we'll see. Um, but... Yeah, it's not not excellent. I, I play him in cash. Uh, I think that's fine. You can you can always play a rise in cash. In tournaments, okay, you can probably stay off him. Uh, Jazzy is definitely the tournament target there. Uh, any of the righties for the Marlins, no thank you. You can always stack the Braves. You can stack them literally every single day. It doesn't matter against who, um, including Sandy Alcantara. Now, I, I don't stack against Sandy. I love this arm. I think he's a, a top five pitcher in baseball. He's probably top three. Um... But he had, he does have a little bit of susceptibility to the left side, and they can get picked apart a little bit because of a higher contact rate there. 30% hard contact rate. It's not worrisome or anything. 
but it is there. So you can get to him with a couple of these lefties over here. Matt Olson, I'm not paying 56 for Matt Olson in this spot, though. Uh, Eddie Rosario, he's the best price-adjusted play at 25, but I'm not super crazy about that either. If you want to go chase a Sam Hilliard, 3,100 down in the 8 or the 9 hole, uh, by all means, go ahead. Um, Ozzy Albies, even at 45, I'm not super crazy about. So kind of off the Braves here. You can play Acuna every day, but um, I'm probably not going to be stacking here against Sandy. And, I mean, if you want to, nobody's going to have it. They'll all be sub-5% owned. So uh, by all means, go ahead. But um, no thank you in, in general. I don't like going after Sandy. All right, let's get to the Padres and the Cubs. Michael Walk on the mound. Kind of an interesting play here, I think. Um, just because of the lack of a lot of options, really, in the mid-range. Here at 8,300 for Waka, I generally don't like playing the guy. He gives up too much power for my liking. Um, 200 ISO, basically, to both sides. on the barrel at a full 10%. Now, that one outing he had where he struck out 26 guys or whatever it was, um, yeah, that's certainly an outlier. 10 against the Braves. And if Michael Walker can get to them, that kind of puts me onto Sandy Alcantara even more, right? Um, that's why I like playing Sandy. And sure enough, we stacked against Michael Walker in the in the start immediately following that 10K outing against Braves, and he got picked apart, gave up seven in four and a third uh, against Brewers. So um, variance with Walker here, definitely. And the Cubs could be one of those stacks that get to him in the early going. They've been very good against right-handed pitching. Sneaky high, 118 WRC plus against righties and 600 PAs. Strikeout rate has converged for them as a, as a team aggregate, about 19%. Now, it's probably going to tick up at one or two clicks here as we get deeper into the season. But overall, this team has been very impressive against right-handed pitching so far. With Nico at the top of the lineup, he's been dynamite. And Dansby, he actually strikes out a 25% clip against righties. So uh, everybody else in the lineup has been excellent and really like getting to the Cubs a little bit here as a very contrarian stack. Uh, 350 woe, but nobody ever plays the Cubs unless it's a Wrigley win game. And it's 45 degrees in 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 Chicago tonight. So we don't want to do that. Uh, when it's bad weather over there, we, we don't really like going after any offense. But I think this is a... Uh, an attackable spot to go after some Waka. Um, I really don't want to play him on the mound necessarily, despite the fact that we don't have anybody else in the mid-range. So uh, market kind of agrees there, low median projection and pretty low ownership so far, kind of a, a 10% is like, oh, okay, we don't have anybody else. Uh, may as well just play Waka. Um, now he can survive and he, and he, he can suppress here for sure, but the four-seamer is really bad pitch for him. Changeup has always been pretty good, but if he's not spotting this four-seamer and on the barrel a little bit, even in 45-degree weather, Cubs can can piece him apart pretty good. Nico at 42, I like that. That price, uh, a pretty decent bit, as a matter of fact. Um, Dansby, Happ, and Seiya Suzuki, got to pay for them, 551, 4900, respectively. Patty Wisdom, still at a bleh, kind of price tag, 44 in the six hole. Not great there, but um, probably the most raw power upside on the team, certainly. But some cheaper pieces like an Eric Hosmer, Eddie Rios, Trey Mancini, the catcher piece, whoever they play, Jan Gomes, he's shown a little bit of power resurgence this year. Um, all playable. Uh, it's 45 degrees, though, at, at Wrigley, so, you know, I wouldn't go, go too crazy with it. Drew Smiley on the other side, he was excellent against the Dodgers, nearly threw a freaking perfect game, went seven and two-thirds, struck out 10, I believe. Um, Could have even been more than that. But uh, for the same reason we attacked Waka after his real outsized performance um, in that in that start against the Braves, I'm going to go right after Drew Smiley here. He did. It, it was 10 strikeouts and just gave up the one hit um, in a pretty unlucky kind of situation. But uh, I'm, I'm going after him. This is not who Drew Smiley is. Now, he's always had some sneaky strikeout upside. A couple of years ago played him a lot um, because he was he was striking out a lot of guys and he was always very cheap this is a playable price tag but I am not going after the Padres number one with a lefty I, I don't like doing it even though they haven't been great yet um, 90 WRC plus so far not impressive 7% walk rate not impressive 21% strikeout rate means they're still taking um, 
taking pretty decent at bats here, and and they're not beating themselves, not walking and getting on base enough, but still not beating themselves. Hitting for a little bit of power here, 160 ISO, it's kind of average. 301 Woba. All of their contact, however, has been of the medium variety. When this starts to, this will not con, uh, persist this entire season. Uh, against certainly against lefties with Tatis back. So at 24%, this is going to regress, and it's going to regress pretty quickly. And I think this is a fine spot to go after some offense, despite 45 degrees in Chicago. I like targeting regression spots against starting pitchers, and I think it's a pretty viable spot to go after Drew Smiley here. In aggregate, just doesn't have the, the raw whiff stuff, and he'll give up some power to the right side. 175 ISO here, and a one and a half homers per nine. It's not terribly worrisome or anything, but I think we can go after Smiley and and expect that the regression train is going to hit hard after that real outsized performance, striking out 10 Dodgers in seven and two thirds, giving up just the one hit. So um, I think you can get to some sneaky offense here. It's bad weather. Don't get me wrong. And not super high probability, but both of these arms are attackable. And, you know, you, you could see each one of these teams put up six runs and, and that's not a terribly crazy uh, performance there. So, um, Probably uh, definitely no Drew Smiley on the mound for me, and probably very little Michael Walker. Uh, maybe I'd get to the field with this, but it, even over 10% ownership, I'm not super thrilled there. Would prefer some of the Cubs pieces. Okay, Oakland and the Angels. Um, they've got uh, another young arm going today in Oakland, or for Oakland. Um, now, bad first inning for Mason Miller last night, but we're going to play him every single start. Uh, definitely low ownership. Um Tilting that he didn't get there, but he he has the upside, and it's probably going to keep his ownership down in, in his further start. So we're real excited about that. Luis Medina, however, um, he, he's a top prospect for Oakland. He is nowhere near the has the same type of um, stuff that that Miller has. So you're going to see a lot of ownership come to the Angels today. He's far more attackable. Um, has a, a fine, I don't have any of the data right here in the sheet, obviously, but has a, a fine three pitch mix, um, four seamer slider command is a bit of an issue and he can, he can spray it and, and get a little wild with it. So you're going to see a lot of ownership come to the angels today. Um, at 5,000 now Medina is, is a starter and, and he is stretched out as it were, but, uh, he has still only thrown, I think in three starts, less than 10 innings down at AAA this year. So he's not going to be long for this game either. Um, and at 5,000, I don't I don't think that's playable. I think you need at least upside for four-plus with good stuff and or five innings or more um, at this kind of price tag. But at, at three or so innings, uh, he's probably, you know, going to be in there for a couple and then, you know, see you later just because he's not fully stretched out. Um that makes it, it, the Angels a very popular stack naturally and attractive stack because they're going to get a lot of the Oakland bullpen who has been horrific. They've thrown a lot of innings this year and they've even like demoted some guys. Uh, Shitaro Fujinami has been demoted to the bullpen. Um, he might actually get a couple innings work today um, and he could be on the docket for them, like very attackable there. They demoted Cap to the to the bullpen, and then they sent him down to the minors. <laughs> you know, so they've had some real struggles over here in in Oakland uh, with their pitching staff. So this is why they're bringing up all these young kids and just letting them go and, and seeing what happens. Um, so you can get to the Angels once again. They've been very disappointing, but this is a high upside spot for them because they're likely to get at least five innings of the Oakland bullpen over here. So a uh, very attractive spot and you're going to see a lot of ownership on them. Definitely. Uh, so you're going to have to try and get different with it. Um, the guys at the top are still expensive. Of course, trout and Otani got to pay for Otani 64. Now 59 for trout. They're going to be there literally all season 45 for Taylor Ward, a little bit more palatable. Anthony Rendon still at 42, still playable. Hunter Renfro still at five K still playable. Not super thrilled with it in general, but, um, He's been hitting the most dingers of, of anybody so far for them. Uh, Ren Hifo, I'm glad they're finally just letting the kid play. There's a good hitter over here, man. And 
He hits from both sides, hits well from both sides. So a cheap piece at 3,200 that you can play uh, down there as well. It'll probably see a good bit of ownership. Brandon Drury probably going to have in the, in the list as well. Uh, Matt Theis or Chad Wallach behind the plate. Uh, they'll mix it up between those two. And they have Zach Neto down at the bottom. So um, cheap pieces if you are, are stacking the Angels and – you're probably going to want to uh, and, and attack a, a young arm here is not going to be long for the game and um, getting a lot of the Oakland bullpen. Patty Sandoval on the mound for the Angels. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love Patty Sandoval. And I was playing him at higher price tag earlier in the season, really expecting these kind of K numbers to, to be there. Um, unfortunately, they really haven't been. His K numbers, he's down two Ks per nine innings. His walks are up two per nine innings. Pitching to a lot more contact. It's not necessarily barrel contact or hard contact, right? And not a lot of aggregate contact over this huge sample here. But he's been very disappointing as a DFS arm so far. And the price tag is now has now corrected. And, and commensurately, we're seeing a very high ownership on him. 35% in early runs. It's pretty warranted here against Oakland. However... 250 PAs against lefties this year, 9% walk rate, it's above average, 22% K rate, it's above average, 174 ISO, that's above average, as is the 340 WOBA and the 123 WRC+. Plus. With a lower strikeout rate and a higher walk rate for Patty in his first four starts this year, um, I think we can play some Oakland pieces once again. We've been able to play them really in every game of this series here and I don't think that really changes in this outing and honestly I like going after a 35% owned Patty Sandoval here he has not been very good in his first four starts two walks one walk three walks six walks in his last outing against the Yankees um not going deep and the K stuff just not there Two, two, six, and five Ks, and very abbreviated outings: five, six, three, and two thirds, and four. So, um, not overly impressed with with a lot of Patty Sandoval here. Perhaps over those last couple of starts, seeming to figure out the K stuff a little bit, but the walks have have skyrocketed. Um, so that's very concerning, and that's like I said, it, it, it's starting to get priced in here at 6,500. He was 9,000 his first start against Oakland this year. 8,500, 8,500, 68 in his last start against the Yankees. Now he's down to 65. Now we can start take being a little bit more comfortable with um, some more variance with Patty, but a very high walk rate against a team that's been kind of sticky, certainly against lefties here in the early going. And the second time they're seeing him this season, you now we did get him for six Ks in six innings. And in uh, Scratch that. I'm looking at last year's result. Um, just two Ks in five innings in, in the first start. So um, a little bit, a uh, little worrisome here. And at this ownership figure, I'm not overly crazy about this. Um, median projection, sure. And that's why the ownership is so high. But I like the price tag. Don't get me wrong. I do not like the ownership here. Given this spot, I think it's a little dangerous for Patty, given um, that the K stuff hasn't quite been there and the walk stuff certainly is there. So a little worrisome. St. Louis and San Francisco, let's get uh, to this last game quickly here. Steven Matz on the mound. Same thing with him, 6000 very attractive price tag. Still has some K stuff, 31% ownership. Ay ay ay. I think I, I'm not sure who I'd rather play. I haven't really decided yet. Uh, but he hasn't been good either. Uh, five and a third, five and two-thirds, five and two-thirds, five and a third this year. Four earned, six earned, two earned, four earned. I mean, the, the K stuff is still there, seven, four, six, and seven. But the walks are there, one, two, five, and two, and the hard contact still still there to right-handed right-handed bats. 1.8 homers per nine, two righties, and the Giants are going to be able to platoon here a little bit. Now it's 60 degrees tonight in San Francisco. Now the weather weather is a little bit warmer there. It's still 60 degrees in San Francisco. Don't get me wrong. If you want to target offense, go to um, you know, somewhere where it's a hell of a lot, go to the Dome, you know, in Tampa or something, or go to Atlanta against in a bad matchup, or certainly go to L.A. and in 75 degrees or something. But from a raw batted ball perspective, this is a horrible spot for Steven Matz. Um, now, these guys, these numbers for the Giants here, still a pretty small sample. Starting to converge, though, 31% K rate. Like, the guys from the right side, 
are tending toward more of the three true outcomes. They're going to walk a little bit. It's not reflected here in this walk rate because a lot of their righties were hurt to begin the season. But they're going to strike out a lot, and they're going to hit for some power. Once again, not reflected so far in the ISO, the WOBA, or the WRC+. So the aggregate numbers are are absolutely attackable with Steven Matz. And, and if that's all we were looking at, then great. Yeah, go ahead. He still has 30% K rate to the left side and 25% K rate to the righties. He will give up some power, but games in San Francisco, you know, so we can weigh all of these different sorts of things here. I think I'm going to side with the Giants here because I think the elevated ownership at 31%, not that it's horrible necessarily. It is high. Don't get me wrong. Um, it's high, but that's kind of priced in at 6000 I'm not sure. I hate playing Steven Matz at, at very high ownership, similar to Blake Snell for me. Uh, just incredibly frustrating because the Giants over here, they're going to platoon against him, and they did activate both Austin Slater and Mitch Hanniger. So now they've got four of their top five, five of their top six hitters are going to hit from the right side, and they also have David Villar down in the seven hole who they're going to mix in as well. Um, so they've got Slater, Tyro Estrada, Mitch Hanniger, J.D. Davis, Wilmer Flores, and David Villar all hitting in the top seven. Michael Conforto is the only other lefty that they might stick in there. Um, so they're going to platoon a lot, and they're going to make this real difficult on Steven Matz. Strikeout rate, yeah, it's it's there, definitely. Don't get me wrong. Hard contact rate is also there. No soft contact whatsoever. And... Give me, give me some of the Giants here at a 1.8 homers per nine. I do not like this at a very high ownership level. I like the price. Don't get, like, let's not kid ourselves. It's attractive down here for these kind of strikeout numbers. And you can play some in in some teams. Don't get, you know, don't get me wrong. But um, give me some of the Giants here for sure. I would absolutely be building some Giant stacks, taking some pieces. Austin Slater's 2,800 leading off. Mitch Hanniger, very good price at 3,900 for him. Now, it might be a little cold to start the season, but um, all of these guys are under 4,000 or right at 4,000. J.D. Davis is 41. Uh, Tyro Estrada is 49, so that's not super exciting. But you can play every single one of these guys and, and get to some leverage. And I think in both of these late games against very popular arms, uh, Steven Matz and Patty Sandoval, you could play the other side and and get some leverage on that. I think they're playable stacks. Di Sclafani on the mound for the Giants, 8,600. And we like Di Sclafani against righty-heavy lineups. Um, the Cardinals are not that anymore. They This is not the same Cardinals. They got Lars leading off. They have Nolan Gorman, who they'll probably stick in the two or the three. Um, they have Alec Burleson, who they've been mixing in at the two-hole two hole as well. They have Tommy Edmond that'll hit from the left side. They also have a Brendan Donovan. And who else do they have? Um, somebody else. One other guy. He's not going to start. Whatever. Um, they have plenty of plenty of lefties over here that can get to Di Sclafani, and that's always been his problem. Bad changeup, bad four seamer, bad bad sinker mix, and the, like the fastballs here leave a lot on the table for him. His his only good pitch is a slider, which is why he's pretty damn good against righties, at least in power suppression. But he's still only got a 22% K rate there. Um, not super thrilled about playing a lot of Di Sclafani here at kind of just a meh price tag. And the field kind of agrees. Median projection so far at, at just 14 and change, 8 10% ownership, it's just kind of whatever. He's not going to walk anybody, and he's not going to put guys on base for free. So if he's really got this slider sp like spinning for him, and he's seeing outsized performance in the sinker and the four-seamer, yeah, he could survive through all of these lefties. Uh, and Goldschmidt and Arenado, Wilson Contreras. Uh, but certainly not my favorite play. At kind of an elevated price tag, I'd be more intrigued here at 8,600. Um, but once again, this is a, a game in San Francisco at night, and the Cardinals here against righties in the early going, just 104 WRC plus, kind of average, not hitting for a lot of power. 21.5% K rates, where we're kind of worried, right? They're still patient and walking. And making some hard contact. So this is not the, the best raw K matchup for Di Sclafani. And I'm not overly thrilled with this price tag at 8600 um, I'd almost rather play Michael Waka. But as I said, we're kind of starving for value in that range. Um, so he that makes him kind of playable uh, in that regard. Um, which is kind of why I 
was a little bit attracted to a $9,000 Hunter Brown here. I know he's got real upside, even though it's a horrible matchup. And the projections so far are kind of suggesting the same thing. Mark is not really sure who the hell we should play, we should be playing here tonight. Um, everybody pretty spread in ownership outside of those two guys down here at the bottom. Everybody pretty spread in the projections in the mid-range outside of Logan Gilbert, really, at, at 9,100. So um, I think you can mix things up here. I'm not overly – this is why I think we could play a Mackenzie Gore against the Mets. I don't think it's horrific. It's really bad spot. I don't like doing it. But – we're kind of starving for a little bit of mid-range value, and that'll keep you contrarian if you want to get to a more popular stack, like a, an Angels, for example. So um, you're going to have to get different with some lineup builds today, and it, it makes it a really interesting tournament slate because you got such heavy ownership on two ch very chalky arms down here that are absolutely attackable. Attractive price tags, definitely, but not overly thrilled with those ownership levels. So give me the Dodgers here up top. Um, I also think you could play if Brian Reynolds is back some Pittsburgh, even if he isn't back, you could probably go after some Tony Gonsolin. He's only going to get four innings. Dodgers bullpen is gassed. They've been awful. Uh, Houston and Tampa. Give me a little bit of Houston. I think, uh, not super thrilled about stacking teams down here in Tampa Bay, but, uh, Fauché is only going to go a couple innings. Not worried about that. Um, no Tampa really against Hunter Brown. Uh, I'm not super thrilled about attacking him. Seattle and Philly, you can get to some sneaky offense. You could also play both pitchers in this game in tournaments if you'd like. Uh, Washington, you can stack them because Godai Sango is walking the whole country. Uh, and Mackenzie Gore on the other side, I think you could play him as well just because the strikeout stuff and suppression has been fantastic this year. You can, you can stack the Mets pretty much every slate. Um, so I think you can play some tournament stuff here in, in this Washington Mets game as well. Miami, Atlanta, almost certainly just pitching here. Uh, give me Sandy over Elder, but I like Elder a little bit too. Don't like the price tag. San Diego and the Cubs. Give me San Diego for sure. A uh, little bit of the Cubs against Michael Walker also. Not terribly worried about the cold weather there, but I mean, 40 degrees, 40 degrees. Let's not kid each other. Uh, Oakland and the Angels play both sides on offense here. You can play some Patty, you know, get some Patty. He's got upside at the price tag. But, uh, you know, strikeouts and the walks are pretty worrisome here. And no pitching, really. Like, I'll have some Steven Matz, don't get me wrong, but I'm not going to have 35% of him uh, against the Giants down here. I'm definitely going to have some Giants stacks. Um, probably not super thrilled about St. Louis, but you can play them as well. Uh, not terribly high upside, probably quite down the list in terms of probability. But, um, you know, I like the Dodgers. I like uh, – who, do, who else do I like? I don't know. Um I like the I like San Diego for sure. So probably the top couple of stacks there for you. So that's it uh, for the main slate. I think we talked for an hour again. Whatever. Um, keep an eye out for the projection updates. This will flesh out a little bit throughout the day, and hopefully, um, you know, with these early look numbers and then and whatever comes in later on closer to lock, it'll give you an idea as, as to where you want to go on the mound. So hope that helps, guys. Good luck to everybody playing tonight.